everybody everywhere, it's the Christmas season again. The season of holly and mistletoe and Santa Claus and jingle bells. Yes, especially jingle bells because our story is called Jingle Bells Happiest Christmas. And here to tell you about it is the beloved star of stage, screen and radio, Charles Coburn. This is Charles Coburn. I particularly like the story of Jingle Bell's Happiest Christmas. It brings the Christmas message in a slightly different manner. When I first saw the title, I said to myself, now how in the world can a thing like Jingle Bells have one Christmas that would be happier than another? But as I read the story, I found out. It's all about, but wait, I'm not going to tell you because I want you to be as surprised and as enchanted as I was with Jingle Bell's Happiest Christmas. And now we present Jingle Bell's Happiest Christmas, starring Charles Coburn. Christmas is the time of giving, the time of the miracle of goodness. And the seeds of this miracle can be planted as early as September at, say, a state fair in the bluegrass country of Kentucky. Souvenirs, souvenirs, get your souvenirs of the fair. Souvenirs of the fair. Get your souvenirs here, folks. Get them while they last. Easy, the easy fair. now, you jingle bells. Old Jackson just going to tighten this good strap. Can't you hurry a little, Jackson? Billy, if the Lord meant folks to hurry, he'd put wheels on them. Hold still, horse. This ain't the track, this the pattern. I bet Jingle Bells knows he's going to race. Yeah, he know all right. He's the cogitatingest girl than I ever see in all my 68 years. Yes, sir. Whoa, whoa, whoa now. If only he could run the way he can cogitate. He's got to run, Jackson. He's got to win. Grant's promised me the purse if I ride Jingle Bells to win. For a fact, your mammy could use that thousand dollars. There, that ghost strap just right now. Up you go, Billy. Then you'll need a little loosening. I'm gonna run him an explosion race, Jackson. Fast break and hold the lead. For the six furlongs, he can do it. You tell Colonel Philip that? Jackson, Gramps isn't a colonel and you know it. <laughs> Been calling him Colonel ever since I worked for him. That 40 years. He like it. You tell him, boy? No. He doesn't think Jingle can win. He doesn't even like Jingle. Well, the reason is he spent a sight of money on him, never got none of it back. And the feed bill keep piling up just the same. You think that explosion's a good idea? You better let that horse run his own race. He had more experience than you. You only 14. This your first time up. First and last in Graham's colors, I guess. Well, he's getting old, same as me. Too much trouble keeping up a stable of horses, so he sell them. Now go loosen Jingle Bells, boy, and keep telling him he got to win this one so your mammy can have that hip fixed. I'll be holding my rabbit's foot for you, Master Billy. You'll need the rabbit's foot, Jackson. Thought you'd be coming down soon, Colonel. What you think? I'm not betting a penny. Jingle Bell's pretty old now. Most nine years old, I reckon. I never could understand that gelding. He's deep through the heart. His hind legs are straight. His eyes are big, and yet he always loses. But you enter him in the race, Colonel. Well, only because Billy tried and teased so hard. <laughs> Anybody think that child your own grandson? Well, after all, he's lived all of his life on Evergreen Farms. I still have hopes his mother will let me adopt him. Man feel good to have his own folks around him, even if some of them adopt it. I th also think I owe it to the memory of Billy's father. That Jim Jordan trained a powerful lot of horses for you. Yeah, he was the best. They're going to the post now. You got an extra rabbit foot, Jackson? I'll buy one mighty quick, Colonel. I want to take it into the stands. Two might work better than one. Gramps, where's Billy? I can't see him. Look there, Bobby. See that big bay with the blaze? Oh, yes, that's Jingle Bell. Now I see Billy. He looks so nice in your blue and gold silks, Mr. Phillips. Does look rather nice at that. 
Are you comfortable, Martha? Just fine. Oh, they're getting ready to race. Yes, they're in the starting gate. Watch that barrier, Bobby. When it goes up, there! Yeah. He's riding well. Oh, now he's going to win, Grim. I know he is. I hope you're right, honey. Come on, Billy. Look at that horse run. Oh, and you told me Jingle Bells was no good. Uh, he may make me take that back, Martha. By George, oh, look at him go. Oh. Two lengths ahead. Come on, Billy. Come oh, on. If they can keep that up. Watch now. Watch. They're coming into the stretch. Oh. Running like a champion. Come on, boy. Come on. Crowding the rail now. Oh no! Oh, Billy! Oh! He's stumbled. What's the matter, Grim? Those other horses are passing him. Of all the confounded luck. Jingle Bells is limping in, Mr. Phillips. He's hurt. Yes. He hurt that leg when he stumbled. Oh, that's a shame. Poor Billy had his heart set on winning that race. The other day I heard him tell Jackson he wanted the money for you, Aunt Martha. It doesn't matter, dear. But it does matter, Martha. As for Jingle Bells, at least he's consistent. A jinx horse from start to finish. What the verdict, Mr. Veterinary? I hope you can tell me before young Billy gets here if the verdict not gonna be good. Easy, boy, easy. Easy there. Feel around here, see ya. Yep. Yeah, this is it, all right. It's a broken coffin bone in this hoof, Jackson. Mm, I sure don't like the sound of that, Doctor. In a horse jingle bell's age, is practically incurable. Yes, sir. And what to tell the Colonel? What I just told you. If this was my horse, I'd have him put away. I'd go tell the colonel that. But I ain't telling that boy Billy. No, sir. Somebody else better tell him that news. Where are you going, Billy? I gotta go see Jackson and Jack. What do you got to see them for, Billy? I guess I don't have to tell you everything. My golly. Grant? I'm in the study, Billy. What'd the veterinary say? Speak, you better tell him, Colonel. Billy, we have to be practical about some things, especially in this day of rising prices. Jingle Bells has broken a coffin bone in his hoof, and the veterinary suggests that we uh, put him away. But, Gramps, I... Look, I can cure that bone. Please don't have him put away grants. But the insurance on him would pay for your mother's operation. That's the most important reason of all. Heal up the misery, Master Billy. That count the most. Well, yes, but... That hip has pained her ever since she broke it three years ago. It never did heal right. She won't let me pay for the operation, but I think we could persuade her to take the insurance money. I... All right, then. But don't tell me when you have him put away. Worse than pulling teeth to say some things, Colonel. Yes, Jackson. Some things are pretty hard to do. Billy! Billy! Miss Martha must hear what you say. Billy! Wait, Martha. What do you want Billy for? Well, I couldn't help hearing what you said to him, Mr. Phillips. He's just brokenhearted. Well, facts are facts, Martha. Oh, I understand. I was brought up with horses and horsemen, but Billy doesn't understand. All he knows is that he loves that horse. Even so. You don't need to think of that money for me. My hip's much better. There's almost no pain at all now, and... Won't you please let Billy keep Jingle Bells? i never forget that Christmas nine years ago when little Billy take his first look at the brand new little coat, and he say, Hello, Jingle Bells. Well, couldn't you at least let Billy keep him till after Christmas, Mr. Phillips? Well, well, until after Christmas, then. <sighs> But only until after Christmas. Oh, you don't know what this means. I'll go tell Billy. Jackson, you old rascal. Whose side are you on? I on both sides, Colonel. What you might call riding the fence. <laughs> There's no exercise for him today, boy. Oh, oh, Jingle. 
Can he get in that fedlock, Jackson? Most no heat at all. Inflammation most all gone. Put the blanket on him now. Yeah, I will in a minute. That limp's most gone, too. You said anything to Gramps? Oh, he know the bone get better. I mean, have you said anything about not putting Jingo away after Christmas? If Gramps knows Jingo's better, he might change his mind. Oh, well, I mentioned to him once or twice, but the colonel got his mind set, kind of. Surprised me that he keep Jingle this long. Only three more days to Christmas. You better do like I say and dry off that horse now and get his blanket on him. Cold and raw today. Feel like a storm coming up. He's got to let him live, Jackson. He's just got to. <laughs> wind blow. I never saw it blow so hard. Barbie, you don't see the wind blow. Well, I do. Uh, it's raining a lot harder, too. But let's get these decorations up. Uh, uh, What's the matter, Mom? Uh, uh, nothing, dear. Just just a little twinge. Uh, it's gone now. You better sit down. I'm all right. Now, let's see about putting up this Christmas tree. Oh, Jackson, close the door quick. Yes, ma'am. Good heavens, what a wind. Radio says winds of hurricane force, Miss Martha. Man, oh man, this is the worst I ever mm. see. Big old pine tree down by the garage bending almost double. I better go make sure Jingle's all right. Oh, he all right. I made sure for come up here. Oh, there's Gramps. Gramps, come see our decorations. Yes, real Christmassy. By George, what a storm. Walk me up from my nap. Jackson, will you go upstairs and close the shutters on this side of the house? That wind might smash the windows. Yes, ma'am. Great Scott! It just smashed that big window over there. Oh, I don't like this. The rain's pouring in. Everything will be soaked. Run out in the kitchen, Barbie. The rain can't come in there. I don't like it one bit. Pull those drapes over that window, Jackson. That'll keep out some rain. Yes, sir, Colonel. Never see the beat of this. I'll be right back. Billy? Billy, don't go out in this storm. Jackson said Jingle Bells was all right. The storm's worse now, Ma. Billy, young idiot, come back here. Why did he have to do that? I'll go bring him back, Miss Martha. By George, that was close. Billy! Come back in here. Look, sure as blazes, that big pine tree is coming down. Billy! Billy, look out! Lord, Lord, don't let that tree hit him. Run, boy, run. Billy! Fall on him, Colonel, and fall on him. Great heavens. Get an axe, Jackson. Get two of them. Yes, sir. I'm on my way. And hurry, Jackson. Those branches will have to be cut away. Martha, you'll get drenched. You... Oh, why couldn't that boy have stayed in the house? <laughs> In just a moment, we'll return to Charles Coburn and our story, Jingle Bell's Happiest Christmas. to Charles Coburn, starring in our Christmas story, Jingle Bell's Happiest Christmas. Old Branch Stubborn, Colonel, don't want to let go. I can get it better from this side, Jackson. She let go then. Now we can move it and get that boy out from under. Let me help you, Jack. Martha, you go back in the house. I can move the branch, Miss Martha. You go back in. Well, hurry. Get him out. Go in and telephone Dr. Michael. That'll be the most help. But Billy... He'll need the doctor, Martha. Now, hustle. Uh, yes, all right. Now, give me a hand, Jackson. Yes, sir, Colonel. Old Jackson carried boy in. Careful now, careful. 
I don't know why this had to happen. The Lord don't tell us things ahead of time. Maybe it's better that way. That confounded gelding. Not his fault, Colonel. Now, don't contradict me, Jackson. Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Well, bring him in the study. It's the only dry room in the house. Did you get the doctor, Martha? No, the line's dead. Let's put him down on the couch, Jackson. Yes, ma'am. That pine tree took down every wire on the place. Billy's coat is all muddy, Aunt Martha. He's soaking wet, too. Yes, Bobby, I know. Run and get me a blanket, dear. And a towel. Okay. And fill the hot water bottle, the whole closet. I'll get out the car and go for Dr. Michael. Old tree right against the garage door, Colonel. Can't get the car out till we chop away and take a long time. And how in the name of... Wait, the gelding. In this year's storm? That's no good, Colonel. It's better than walking. I haven't ridden in ten years, but this is a good time to start in again. Well, let me go, Colonel. No, 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 I'll go. Saddle jingle bells, Jackson, and hustle. My God, what a storm. Haven't seen anything like this in years. Go on, Jingle. Go on. Trees down. Roads washed out. This creek is flooding. Whoa. Whoa, boy. Now what to do? Well, flood or no flood, we've got to get there. Are you afraid of it, boy? How do you think you can get through? Well, we'll try it. Go on. Go on. Get up. Get up. Mighty strong current. Keep going, Jingle. Keep going. That's the stuff. You nearly made it. Now. Now go. There's the doctor's place. Up this driveway, Jingle. Be just my confounded luck to find the doctor out. Oh. Oh, my whoa. Billy. Billy. Doc. Falling tree hit him. He was still unconscious when I left. All right, I'm back on my car while I'm getting my thing. You can't get a car through, Doc. Roads are all washed out. And that horse of yours have to carry double, Jonathan. What about that surrey you used to have? Good, I've forgotten about that. It's at the back of the stable. Well, I'll hitch jingle bells into it. We'll have to take the back road to get around the flood, but we can make it. Go get your things, Doc. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Any sign of them yet? No, Miss Martha. None down that road but the rain. Oh, dear. Another drink of water. Yes, dear. Now, don't try to move. You can sip the water through this straw. There. Tastes good. Does your back still hurt, Billy? Not so much. Couldn't dodge a tree. Bobby. Yes, Aunt Martha. Will you bring another glass of water for Billy, please? Yes, I will. Uh, shall I bring another blanket to put over him? If you want to, dear. That's a good girl. What did that mean old tree have to fall on for anyway? They're coming in now, Miss Martha. The Colonel and Dr. Michael. Thank heaven. They got that Jingle Bells hitched to a Surrey. Jingle hitched to a Surrey? Lie still, dear. But, Mom, Jingle's a racehorse. He's not carriage horse. Shh. All right, Billy. Some storm, Jackson. Sure is a humdinger, Doctor. This way, Doc. Good afternoon, Martha. Hello, Doctor. Well, well, what have we here? A boy who tangled with a tree? Uh, I guess so, Doctor. Gramps, you shouldn't hitch Jingo in the carriage. Well, I'll be blessed. Just what his father would have said. <laughs> Spoken like a true horseman. Now, Jonathan, if you'll wait outside, Martha and I'll have a look at this boy. Now, tell me if it hurts, Billy. And where? Blast it all. I wonder what's taking that doctor so long. Any and news yet, Colonel? Not yet, no. Then I'll go back and finish rubbing down jingle bells. 
You let me know when there's any news. Yes, Jackson. I'm mighty anxious to know. He's been almost 20 minutes. What's the story, Martha? Well, Billy was badly scratched and bruised, but the doctor couldn't find anything seriously wrong. Good. No bones broken? No. Uh, I think I'll sit down for a moment. Uh, That's great news. Those big branches must have kept the tree trunk off the ground just far enough to keep from crushing him. Yes. Yes, that must be it. Can I get you a cup of hot tea, Martha? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Phillips. I'm all right. That hip is paining you more and more all the time, isn't it? That's not important. Oh, no, I think it is. If you just listen to reason and let me adopt Billy... No. My people always made their own way in the world, without depending on anyone. I was brought up to feel the same way. But it isn't a matter of you and Billy depending on me. Quite the opposite, Martha. Well, he's a mighty lucky boy, Jonathan. No concussion, apparently no internal injuries. You did just right in coming after me, though. It could have been serious. Uh, keep him quiet a couple of days, Martha, and let me know if any pains develop or any temperature. All right, Doctor. And thank you ever so much. This is the best Christmas present I could possibly get. Speaking of Christmas, Jonathan, better all come to my house. You're very kind, Doc, but we'll make out. Oh, but where? Inside of this house is a dripping shambles. Well, we'll find a place for the tree for the youngsters. If necessary, we'll have it down in the stable. By George, there's an idea, Doc. Christmas in the stable. are just lovely. Now I can really learn to ride. See, Jackson? Nah, ain't them so, Miss Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at Jingle Bells. I'd like to know what he's thinking. Huh, I guess I'll go back up to the house. Aren't you having any fun, Billy? After all these presents? I know how you feel, dear, but you'd better stay here. Yes, wait, Billy. Here's another present, the Jingle Bells. I wonder what that can be. You open it, Billy. Uh, no, let Gramps open it. I wouldn't think of it. Here, youngster. Well, all right. Old Jingle got his eye right on that prison. <laughs> I'm dying to know what's in it. Here's some apples and a bunch of carrots. All done up in red ribbons. <laughs> How cute. And here's an envelope. Well, read it out good and loud, boy. It says, Dear Jingle Bells, the best Christmas present I can think of for you is to give you to... To Billy. Oh, Billy. And it's signed Gramps. You mean Jingle is really my horse now, Gramps? Yes, Billy. And he doesn't have to be put away? No, no. He won his race and his reprieve in that storm. Well, gee, Gramps, I, I don't know how to thank you well, or what to say. Don't say anything, Billy. Oh, yes, yes. Incidentally, the feed bills and uh, the incidentals can continue to come to me. That's a wonderful thing to do, Mr. Phillips. Gramps is the name. Yes, Gramps. Just wonderful. Ain't nothing made old Jackson no happier for a long, long time, Colonel. <laughs> I guess that makes you feel better, Billy. Golly, yeah, I guess it does. Oh, one more thing. For some time now, I've tried to get Billy's mother to let me adopt Billy. Well, that's not fair, Mr. B Gramps. Not at this time. Now, hold on, Martha. I'm not going to say what you think. Instead, I'm going to ask to adopt you. Adopt me? Yes. Oh, oh my no, goodness oh, gracious. You can't oh. mean that. But I do mean it. And in that way, I not only acquire you as a daughter... But I get Billy as a grandson. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the girl had figured this out somehow. That would make you kind of my brother, wouldn't it, Billy? I guess so. Something like that. How would you like being my brother? Well, you're a pretty good kid, Barbie. I could teach you about horses and, and how to ride jingle bells. Oh, golly. He likes me better than I thought. Oh, please say yes, Auntie Martha. It's all right with me, Mom. <laughs> well, since Billy approves, I... Oh, Gramps, you're just the sweetest man in the whole world. Billy and I are so lucky that you want us. I am the lucky one, my dear. But this calls for joyful singing. Jackson thinks we ought to sing. Well, come on, then. We'll all join you. Take the hole with balls of holly. Fa la 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 Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 Ha, ha, ha.
Well, Jingle Bells thinks our Christmas turned out well. Oh, it's a wonderful Christmas, Gramps. Almost too wonderful. Yes, and for all these blessings, we should give our humble thanks. I think a prayer would be in order, Jackson. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord, for all our blessings this day. And don't never let us forget them. And Lord, a Merry Christmas to you. Amen. Our star, Charles Coburn, will return in just a moment. Charles Coburn, speaking for our entire cast to thank you for being with us for Jingle Bell's happiest Christmas. And now my personal wishes to all of you, my friends everywhere, for a very Merry Christmas and my hopes that the coming year will be the happiest you've ever known. <laughs>